Welcome to amazingly beautiful Yosemite. As you can see, I'm here in Cook's Meadow, and we're gonna do a shootout between two relatively well-known and highly sought after DSLRs. They happen to be the Canon 5DSR, which boasts the whopping 50 megapixel sensor, which is pretty much the top of the heap at the moment. And it's something that everybody wants to try, and it's what every computer wants to avoid processing. And uh, this is within the realm of medium format, obviously. It has amazing resolving power, way more than anything else that Canon is currently offering. And we're gonna compare this DSLR to the Canon D2000. Now this is the great grandfather of DSLRs. This is from 1998 and boasts a whopping two megapixel sensor. This is what all of our Canon DSLRs are built upon. And actually, this isn't even Canon technology other than the body. The digital innards is pretty much from a Kodak line of DSLRs. This is when Kodak was king still. Who knew? So they were really the player for digital technology, and this was actually a rebranded Canon DCS 520, which looks exactly the same, except it has the Canon, or it doesn't have the Canon uh, nameplate, which is right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this one off to the side here. It's essentially the same, and we're going to do a head-to-head -head shoot between the 5DSR and the Canon D2000. 2015 versus 1998. Let's see what the difference is between 50 megapixels and two megapixels, along with some uh, digit sensor magic between the two, and uh, we'll see how they size up. One thing that I will add that's really cool about this is that even though there is a 17 year difference in the technology, the user interface is pretty much the same. The buttons, um, the, uh, the graphic user interface on the back, um, it's a little bit smaller and not quite as pretty, but it's essentially the exact same thing. Like you can pick up from using a modern uh, Canon DSLR and pretty much have a good handle on how this actually works. So uh, that's a pretty nice bonus. Um, the one thing that is also very different is the uh, media that it uses. And the media on this is what you'd expect. It's an SD card and also a CF card. Uh, in this case, I have like 128 gigabyte card in here and on this one it originally shipped with um, a PCM CIA card that you could use an adapter with for a CF card and you could also use what was then the uh, top of the technology heap the micro drive and it shipped with a Viper 340 megabyte uh, micro drive and for this one I've actually got an adapter in here with a one gigabyte card and that was hard enough to come by so Let's see how they fare. Let's go have some fun. Why are you still here? Let's go shooting. All right, first up, let us look at the crop factor for each camera. The D2000 is an older camera and has a 1.6 crop factor. That means everything in terms of focal length is going to be 60% greater on the D2000. The 5DSR, on the other hand, is a no crop sensor, which is great because you can see the full field of view of what your camera lens is able to capture. In this instance, the 5DSR comes out on top. Next up, let's look at how sharp the sensor is. Crop factor accounted for the D2000 at 12 millimeters on the Canon 24, 11 to 24, F4 lens looks a little soft on the right and left. I'm not exactly sure why this is. We could assume that maybe perhaps the modern optics doesn't match up as cleanly to these older sensors in this old body. Whereas the 5DSR on the other hand at 18 millimeters to compensate for the crop factor looks sharp throughout the image. In this instance, the 5DSR comes out on top. How does the auto white balance compare between these two cameras? The D2000, surprisingly, has an auto white balance that is quite warm. A little bit more reddish hues, a little bit more purple. This is great for the magic hour type photograph, but in every other situation, it might not be so ideal. The 5DSR, on the other hand, has a much more natural look to it, and in this instance, as a result of that, the 5DSR comes out on top. 
This is one test I could not wait to try. Let's see how these cameras hold up with a basic night photography exposure. So the difference here is that the D2000 has a CCD sensor and the 5DSR has a CMOS sensor. Now, CCD sensors are notoriously bad for night photography, and that is incredibly clear right here, where we have more noise than we know what to do with. In fact, there's so much it eclipses the subject. At an exposure of 30 seconds with an ISO of 1600 at f2.8, this is a blowout, and I really mean blowout. The 5DSR's images are crisp, clean, and they come out perfect, exactly what you would expect. But these old CCD cameras just can't handle night exposures. I did try this with a light painted scene as well. The results were equally bad. So as you might expect, the 5DSR comes out on top. And to be fair, the D2000 does cap at the ISO 1600 uh, sensitivity, uh, but even still, the CCD just wasn't made for long exposures at night. How well do each of these bodies deal with fine detail? For that, we hooked up a macro lens to each of these bodies, and I took a picture of a beautiful aspen leaf resting in the snow. The D2000 at a holistic view looks just as good as the 5DSR. And from that perspective, things are even. But once you do a one-to-one -one crop on each image, it becomes clear that a 25-fold increase in resolution is going to give the edge to the 5DSR. You just can't beat extra megapixels when it comes to fine detail. And for that, the 5DSR really, really shines. Next up, video functionality. I'm just kidding. There's no video test. The D2000 doesn't even have video. Camera Easter eggs. Finally, we get to see where the D2000 shines. The D2000 has the retro video game of Pong on the camera. So between photo shoots, you can kick back and challenge your camera to a good old fashioned game of paddling a ball back and forth between two really pixelated square rectangular paddles. Whereas on the 5DSR, you have to slum it and you just have to look at photos and chip. So in this instance, we finally see what the D2000 excels at playing Pong. Uh, good old D2000, I knew you wouldn't let me down. Take that 5DSR. All right, so that was a blast. I really enjoyed going out into the field and testing out the D2000 against the 5DS. One of the things that's really cool about this camera is that after 17 years, it holds up amazingly well. Yes, it's only two megapixels, and yes, it's 17 years old, but the 5DS is just gangbusters ahead of uh, the technology curve of 1998. So would I take this out on my next uh, Sports Illustrated uh, cover shoot? No, I would not. But it does make you think, what do we use our cameras for these days and what do we use the, the photos for? The majority of the time, they're just sharing them online. So two megapixels actually isn't that bad, but we have a lot better tools at our disposal these days, namely our phones, which have resolution of three, four, five times uh, what this camera can provide. I'm still impressed. It still did a great job in terms of the image quality. And well, you're just not gonna be able to bait the beat playing Pong, right, when you're bored and you thought chimping was your major problem. Uh, the 5DS is just way farther down the line in terms of the technology curve. It's awesome that we have this at our disposal. Yes, of course, the 5DS wins, but it's been incredibly fun trying this out. I hope you enjoyed seeing what it was capable of and how it stacks up. So thank you very much for staying tuned this long and actually uh, joining me on the journey of testing out the D2000. And uh, I welcome you to stay tuned for the next video. There's gonna be a really good one coming up. <clears throat> and if you haven't already, subscribe somewhere on here to my YouTube channel. And then also, I want to send out a very special thank you to Chuck Westfall, who is the person who got me down this path for this particular video. He had shared a very brief video uh, reminding a friend how the D2000 had a Pong Easter egg on it. And I could have just used that video and spared everybody this uh, long-winded video, uh, but I really wanted to take this through its paces. I was very lucky in finding one of these on eBay of all places. They're very hard to find. 
Um, but Chuck is an old timer. He's just been on the online forums forever. I always looked up to him when I was uh, searching and investigating anything to do with photography back in the late 90s and early 2000s. And he's a great guy. So thank you very much, Chuck. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, thank you very much for the inspiration. All right, everybody, have a great day. And uh, we'll see if uh, you are happy with your latest DSLR or you've got to go back out there and find a D2000. Well, they might be tough. So just enjoy your camera and happy shooting.